Somebody asked me a question about part of the modeling process and the end result that we achieved in this model right here, dealing with some triangles that ended up being in the polygon mesh. So when you're working with subdivision surfaces, you're generally going to get your best results when you have quads, and specifically when you get loops of quads. When you have a loop of quads like this, you're generally going to get your best result from the subdivision surface system, which is based on an algorithm called Catmull-Clark subdivision. But there's always going to be a situation where you're going to run into topology where you're going to have triangles that come into the scene and you're just probably not going to be able to get rid of them. And that's actually okay. So let's come over here and take a look at this. I want, let me just switch over to modeling view here so that we can take a look at the region in question. So there are a couple of regions where I have triangles. So I've got a triangle here and here. I've got a triangle here and here. And I left them that way because, frankly, when you look at the rendering, you don't really see any artifacts. And it just sped up the tutorial, frankly, by not walking through a bunch of extra steps. But I'm going to show you now how we can actually resolve those if you do want to have proper quads in this region. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take this and this and convert those into quads. So I'm going to press the K key start right here and I'm going to go right to here and then right to here and then switch over to edge mode click this edge hold the shift key click this edge bring up the context menu and then invoke dissolve edges so now we have one two three four sides it doesn't look like a quad but it's a quad okay as long as it's got four sides it's a quad and it really doesn't matter exactly what its shape is. So now we have a quad and a quad and a quad and a quad. So we satisfy it right there. So let's come over here and take a look at this right here. Is it possible to turn this, these two triangles into quads? And yeah, it is. Let's do the same thing. OK, and I'm going to click here, go to here, and then back over here, return. We're going to select this edge, hold the shift key, select this edge, bring up the context menu, then invoke dissolve. And there we go. We've got sort of a loop going around here. In fact, let's come over, double click this, and that gives us, you know, a loop going around. Now, this actually isn't exactly ideal. Let me come over here and change the clipping plane. This isn't precisely ideal, having that small edge right in here. So you could very easily come in here. Let's come into vertex mode. And we're going to switch down here to vertex slide. And I'm just going to do a quick slide to sort of normalize those. So you can just tweak that. And this is why I didn't go to the effort to do this, because the original result with a few triangles worked well enough that you didn't see any. But there may be situations where you really want to try and get quads and loops of quads. And this is a situation where that worked out. Let's come over here now and take a look at what that looks subdivided wise. So I'm going to up this to two and we're going to switch over here into a wireframe view and I'm going to turn off optimal display. So there we go. We end up with just loops of subdivided quads versus when we look over here, we just have a slightly different configuration. But again, ultimately, when we turn on shading, you're really not seeing a huge amount of difference in this situation, which is why I really didn't go to the effort to try and show what converting to proper quads would do. But, you know, you may find a situation where that's necessary. My point here is to show you that there's flexibility in the system. 